welcome, whether you're joining us from down the street or across the country, or I guess out of the country, Canada, Canadian friends. Um, we're glad you're all here. Hopefully everybody who is around here got your paint kits today. Um, I think you will get an echo for a little bit. Sorry, I mentioned that early and before everybody was loaded on. So Lori is across the room from me um, and I'm gonna mute as soon as she starts teaching and that echo will go away. Hopefully you can still understand a little bit um, what I am saying. So if you have questions, you're welcome to unmute yourself and ask them, um, but we might not hear you um, during the paint night because I have to turn everything will be down so you don't have that echo. Um, so if you need us to slow down or um, or whatever, you can send us a chat or I think there's an even, even a slow down button if you know where that is. So, um, oh, Damaris, what a pretty name, Damaris. Damaris says she, I'm assuming she, did first landscape painting with us. And then she said, you brought art to me. I had the good oh, to buy a canvas at the dollar store. Thanks for keeping Zoom. Oh, that's awesome. Chronic illness equals ability with Zoom <laughs> from Tennessee. Thank you. Thank you, Tamaris. We're so happy to have you. It's fun to be able to share art with everybody. Um, let's see, does anybody have any questions before we get started? Hopefully um, everybody saw the instructions with the um, with the door itself. Um, will you let me know in the chat if you have not sketched the door onto your um, canvas yet? Because we probably need to get that done before. There's a there's a thing that looks like this that's in the event bride or in your kit if you had a kit. Uh, where you can trace the door. Um, let's see if I can. I'll try to show it in the chat. Okay, you haven't even get a kit. So if you're not from, if you don't live here, you know you didn't get a kit. Okay. Okay. So if you don't have your door sketched on or you haven't seen the door sketch, grab a ruler and Lori will go through kind of how far from the edges to do. Um, if you have um, the template, you can cut it out and trace it right quick. Um, let me look and see if I can share it in the chat if somebody wants to print it really fast. I'll see if I can, although one time my, the chat did not work for my, when I was. I call them the dimensions and then they can. Okay, Lori says if you just get a ruler, she can tell you what the dimensions are. <clears throat> If I can, um, and then you can sketch in your save it somewhere I can host it so I can add it to the chat real quick. At the same time that I'm admitting people. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and mute myself unless somebody has a question for me. I can talk and let me talk you through sketching your door onto your canvas. If you have a, a ruler or any sort of straight edge to use, that will be super helpful. Um, ruler would be the best if you have it. And I will work on trying to, um, if you wanna try and get it done later or whatever, I'll try and add it in the chat. Um, oh, yes, Lois, good question. I will, well, Lori, are you ready right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah. So there's a, there's a black 
and there's a Payton's Gray. The Payton's Gray has less in it than the black does. It looks almost black, but really it's a dark, dark blue gray. Um, if you are, if you have a kit from us to try and figure out what everything is in the kit, um, then the umber is the dark, dark brown, and the sienna is the the lighter brown. And I think everything else is probably pretty. Oh no, we have an emerald green. Which this is your light green if you have the list. It says light green. And then we have a thallow green, which is the darker kind of green with a little blue tint to it. If you're wondering what all the different paints in your kit are. This is how you know I love Lori and I love this painting because I filled up 11 colors <laughs> for this kit. There was... <laughs> Not gonna lie, there were there were some tears. We'll have well, to do one at least monochromatic again, <laughs> right? Next month we're doing black and white paint. <laughs> um. Anyway, I said I was gonna mute myself, but I, <laughs> I wanted to address that question from Lois. Um, and um, I am going to let Lori walk you through sketching okay. the door. Welcome everybody to paint night tonight. We are painting what I call Villa Door because it kind of reminds me of something that should be like in a villa. And so um, tonight's focus is going to be on shadow and texture because we're going to be using our palette knife to create a stucco building. And it, this painting really pops because we add shadow to the door frame. So it looks as though the door is is recessed a bit and creates a shadow. So to get started with our painting, you guys that have done it, this enough, know if you want to have a little frame around it, you just tape it with a piece of, uh, of your paint tape on it around the edge. So there is this sheet that, that Wendy was talking about that is the template for the door. If you don't have this template, you will need to draw. So can you see, can you see how I have driven, drawn the door here? So let me tell you how you draw it. It is, you're going to get a ruler and you're gonna mark an inch and a half from the right edge of your canvas. So put a couple of marks at an inch and a half. That's where the door frame is going to begin. Or have a little bit of stucco building around the right side of the door. So the door frame, the door itself is three by three and a half by six inches. So let's see. And the frame around it is three quarters of an inch. So that puts, so an inch and a half, you made a couple of marks. We see in that a couple of marks at an inch and a half here on the side of your canvas, it'll be important that you draw a straight line. So if you wanna just eyeball it, this is about how big the door is. We're working on a nine by 12 canvas here. So you draw the straight edge there. You come up uh, an inch from the bottom. So it's a little lower to the bottom. So mark an inch on the bottom, draw another line. It's a little over four inches, about four inches wide. And the door frame itself is three quarters of an inch. Can you make it an inch? Sure, just make it an inch if it's easier. So you're gonna go ahead and draw an inch rectangle. So as you can see from the door, because we're gonna make it look like it's recessed, there is no door frame on the left side. Do you notice that? The door, the door on the left side is just one straight line. So you have, one, you have this rectangle here, larger rectangle. It's like, mine's four and a quarter by seven and a quarter, large rectangle. Inside that is a three and a half by six inch door that's flush against the left side. Then you make your little door frame. 
and draw a diagonal line connecting the two rectangles. So it's kind of like you've drawn a, a cube, only you have the left side is flush, just one straight line. And if you don't have the template, the door handle is about three inches up from the bottom of the door, a little circle. Okay. So while you guys are drawing that, uh, questions again about the size? Let me tell you. The edge of the door frame is an inch and a half from the edge of your canvas. The bottom is an inch from the bottom of the canvas. Inside the door frame is a three and a half by six inch door that's flush on the left side and has these little diagonal lines to connect it to the right side. The door knob is about three inches up, draw a little circle, like quarter inch circle, quarter inch orb. Okay. So I told you the focus is going to be on shadow tonight. And because we are doing the door, one thing you're, that's going to be important is when we are using our palette knife around the door, we want to keep those straight lines of the door. We'll talk about that as we come to it. So I want to just do a little light, uh, a light lesson here on shadow. So here on the paper, on this paper, I have drawn my my just hand sketch door frame. So it's flush on the left side and it's got these diagonal lines that's attaching my frame. So my paper is 2D, your canvas is 2D. There's no depth to it, but we're gonna create depth with shadow. So we're going to imagine the sun up here is how, this is how it's shining on the door frame, okay? So if the, if the sun is up above the house, shining down at this angle, that means our, our darkest area is going to be the top of the door frame. I'm just gonna do it with pencil here so you can get the idea. We're gonna have, because the sun is actually higher than the door and it's shining down this way so that the door frame at the top is going to be in the shadowed part. This side of the door frame is going to have some light on it, but the light isn't actually coming from the sun. It's reflecting off the door. So the sun is coming here, shining on the door, and it's reflecting the light back here. So your medium tone is going to be the side of the the side of the door frame, okay? This is what's gonna create the depth when we're painting. So the shadow of the door frame is the, is the top of the door frame. Medium light, it's being reflected off the door and it's, it's hitting this side. Whereas what is going to be the lightest in our door frame is the, is the, what do you call it? The bottom of the door, the foot part of the door frame. So the light's gonna come down here. So this is gonna be our lightest area of our door frame. And then we're going to have a shadow in the corner. It's gonna be like a little triangle. So just to give you an idea in pencil, this is what our shadow in our door frame is going to look like. Our light is coming from the top right so it, the light is coming in. The darkest shadow is going to be the door frame on the ceiling part here because it's not getting light. The medium tone is gonna to be on the side of the door frame because it's getting the reflected light from the sun hitting the door and reflecting back. And the lightest part of our door frame will be the, the bottom of it with the shadow cast right here in the corner. So that's, I can refer to this later when we're painting, but that will help you. That will help you with the painting. So here it is in person. The dark, the dark shadow is the top of the door. The medium shadow is the side of the door frame. The lightest shadow, which is gonna create a step for us is down here at the bottom. You guys can refer to that 
as we're painting. Yes, so the part of the, okay, the the video or the picture there that says canvas is the one that is the camera that's on the finished, the finished, the finished picture. So you can just pin that. So it's always up on your screen. So this painting is done mostly with palette knife, but because I know you kind of freak out with palette knife sometimes, I'm gonna take a deep breath to start, right? <laughs> We got to be careful here. So you are just going to take your white paint if you have a kit or if you have the tube, just squirt some white paint on your canvas. And we want the white to be around the door. So I'm just using my palette as a like a spreading knife, like a spatula when you're painting, when you're cooking. And then you're going to take your palette knife. Remember, you, you're you using the bottom of the palette knife. You turn it over and you're just gonna spread the white paint out on your palette, or on your, excuse me, on your canvas. So we want to take, um, we're gonna cover the whole picture except the door and the door frame with the white. So if you have a larger brush and you wanna just paint it on, that's fine. Just, um, this this is where the, the palette knife comes in real handy. And I know you can't see this very well cause I'm doing white, but you can use the edge of your palette knife to keep the paint right along the edge of your door. Remember anytime while we're painting here, if you have a question, um, I know that Wendy can't hear you real well, but you can put it in the chat. If if we're just going entirely too fast for you, just give her a thumbs down. She's looking at the screen. She's watching it so she can let me know. So don't be too particular about this. You just want a little thin layer of white paint all the way around the door. So your, your palette knife should just kind of glide over your paint. You shouldn't be scraping the paint off of the canvas. You should have enough paint on the back of your palette knife that it's just like you're frosting a cookie or something, you know? You're not pulling up the crumbs, so we don't want to take our paint all the way down to the canvas and scrape it off. If it was a different color than white, you'd be able to see that better, but... Just a thin layer of paint. And also remember, um, it's good to have your hair blow dryer close by because you might want to dry some of this um, so we're not, everything isn't getting all blended. And so I know it, it can be very relaxing to paint if you're not holding your breath. So don't hold your breath. Um, when I use my palette knife, I am barely holding on to my palette knife. It is just held very loosely in my fingers. And I'm actually, I'm holding it more towards the end of my palette knife, which is helping the palette knife to kind of float on the paint versus scraping the paint. Again, just using the edge of my palette knife to give myself a, a straight line around the door frame. You guys are really gonna like the next part. So I've got I've got my my canvas here all frosted with my white. And except for my door frame, I've left the door frame completely empty. Now we're gonna add our texture. So for texture, you're just going to take your palette knife and pounce it, just little tiny taps, little tiny taps. Uh-huh, which is why, yeah, you needed to have a little layer of paint on there 
not just scraping the canvas. You want a little bit of paint on there. And you're just, it makes such a cool, looks almost like an alligator or something texture on it. I don't know if you guys can see that yeah. white. Yeah. So now I'm just gonna be in, being careful with the edge of my palette knife when I get close to my door. I'm using that edge of my palette knife to keep my directions. But once I'm on the house, I'm just randomly, you can twist and turn your palette knife, give it a little bit different direction, but we're creating stucco here on this villa. You can't help yourself. Yeah, I have to lay my, I have to lay the canvas down so I can get some pressure on it here to. And if you look at the finished picture, you see we're gonna add some, I don't know, kind of bougainvillea type uh, plants on the, on the left side of our door, a little bit on the bottom right of our door. But if you look at the finished canvas, you'll be able to see where your green is gonna be in here. So don't, don't worry, you're gonna cover this stucco up with your plants here on the left side. So don't be too, too uh, particular about how your texturing looks there. Very, very little of it is gonna actually show. So again, we're just going over all of our white, even under our door frame. What, 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 will, what will be our little doorstep? Okay. So I've got that done. Now I, I need to move quickly here because I'm going to put a little color into this by having a little yellow ochre on my palette knife. Yeah, the yellow ochre is, is the mustard colored yellow, the one that looks darker that's more a mustard color so you need you can put a little bit of the was it burnt umber the dark brown put a little bit of the dark brown on your palette and then put a little of the yellow ochre the mustard cup color excuse me this mustard color on your palette, just, I'm just using my bigger brush to kind of scoop it out. So I have here my yellow ochre mustard, my dark brown. Okay. So while my while my um, paint, my white stucco is still damp, I want to take my palette knife, and I'm going. I'm using the bottom of my palette knife, and I'm putting some yellow ochre on it. Here's the top of my palette knife. Here's the bottom of my palette knife. And I'm also going to dip the bottom of my palette knife in the dark brown. So now on the bottom of my palette knife, I have a little dark brown and a little of the mustard color. I'm gonna use my palette knife and the white that's already on the stucco of my house to create a little bit of a shaded kind of antique-ish looking to the terracotta, to the, yeah, the stucco on the house down here by just patting these on. Okay, see how that looks? It looks yucky. So we got to just keep patting it until it blends. I mean, I know the dark brown will look really dark to begin with, but you're just going to blend it out and, and, and work a little bit of this mustard and brown into your terracotta, or why do I keep saying terracotta? Into your stucco. I'm so happy I see you there, Donna. So if you live in California, all the houses are stucco. <laughs> if you live in Arizona where I live, all the houses are stucco. So can you see the value change in the stucco once I've put the yellow ochre and the dark brown and tapped it into my stucco? So instead of just a stark white, I have a little bit of a little bit of a color on there. Like I say, we're going to be painting over this. So here's a close up of the finished one. You can see back here behind the shadow of the of the plant, a little of the yellow. 
I'm also going to add a little of the of the yellow ochre to the stucco on the right side. I'm gonna run out of yellow there. Oh my gosh, I forgot to turn off my phone. Okay. Oops. My my friend, his birthday is today. And I, 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 I tried to get a hold of her this morning to drop off a little treat and she wasn't home. So um okay, so I have the yellow ochre and the dark brown on the bottom of my palette knife. I'm gonna come up here. Tap it on, looks pretty yucky. <laughs> so I'm gonna just keep tapping it here. I'll do it so you can see it. I'm gonna just keep tapping this until I get it blended in with my white that's still just a little bit damp on the right side of my door. And I'm gonna carry it lightly, my little yellow ochre across the bottom, which will be the step. You can see how that goes. You, there's the door to go in. Here's the door frame. So they're going to come out the door. There's a little bit of a door frame step here, and then they're going to step down onto the street. Okay. So I'm finished with my stucco. So I'll hold it up so you can see. Very good. So you just keep working on that. I'm gonna rinse my uh, palette knife in my water so I can wipe it off. We always wanna wipe your palette knife off when you're done with it. Cause it's a little, it's harder than a brush to clean if the paint dries on it. So, so I'll leave this set here so you can see it good. I'm almost thinking I want Okay. So does anybody have any questions? Put them in the chat there's somebody writing something can you see what they're writing you're welcome to also just unmute and ask and ask Try and unmute mine for a second so that if anybody wants to ask out loud, you can. Okay. Did you see something in the chat? I'm not seeing anything. I, I saw. I saw some. I saw some words coming up. Oh, it's probably the closed captioning. Oh, okay. Okay. So um, thumbs up. Is everybody ready to, to go on? I think you might find it nice. We'll, we'll take just a couple minutes because there's still some people out there to dry this. So if you have a blow dryer, it only will take like 20 seconds. If you don't have a blow dryer, fan your canvas and get some of your, uh, get your stucco to dry a little bit. I have a little blow dryer, so I'm gonna use that.
we're drying it not because we're going to be painting on it, but just so it doesn't get on the on the heel of your hand while you're painting on the door. So if you have, if you printed off the little directions here, we've we've uh, we're on step four. Yellow ochre on the top of the door frame. So with our palette and the angle brush or quarter inch brush that you have. Will you ask to make sure everybody's ready to move on? Oh. Tell them to put it in the chat if they're not. I know I started late. You guys late, put but in I'm the chat if you're catching. not ready to move on or or look at us and, and give us a thumb a thumbs up that you're ready to go. It's just it's so hard just when I can't when you can't see, see him in person. There's so many that don't have their video on. Okay, so I'm going to make uh, the next step, step four, we're going to start our shadow on the door frame. So remember my little pencil sketch here at the beginning? We're going to be making different values of yellow ochre and white. Yellow ochre is our shade color. So I'm going to do yellow ochre with a little bit of white for the dark, for this shape up here at the top of my door frame. Then it's going to have yellow ochre with more white in it for a lighter value down the side. So let's go that far. So I have some yellow ochre already here on my palette. I'm going to use my palette knife to scoop out some white onto my palette. Oh, that's okay. Because I was going to paint and then I couldn't stop myself. <laughs> yeah, I don't have all my stuff set up. <laughs> And you have no apron, so don't get on your clothes. I know. <laughs> like, uh, I, I hope you guys are all having fun. <laughs> so taking my, my yellow ochre and I'm adding some white to it. I'm actually going to put a little of the burnt umber into it later. But for right now, I'm just going to put the base color down. So if you want to mix it on your palette, and say, okay, that's my that's my darkest value of my shadow. Now I'm going to have a lighter yellow ochre. So if I hold those up, can you see the difference in the value? This is yellow ochre and white. This is yellow ochre and white. This one has more white in it, so it's become a lighter value. So I'm going to start with my darkest one. You're asking which brush? Um, in my kit was like a quarter inch angle brush. So you just want like a flat brush so you can get in there, so you can get a little edge on it. Because again, we're working with our door frame. So we want to, we want to preserve the straight lines. So with the angle brush, you can, you can put it right up there in the corner. Drag it across. Don't clench your brush too tight. Take a breath. To create the perspective of the door being recessed, we need to preserve also this diagonal line on the right side. So when you go to paint it with your darker value, drag the edge of your brush down so you preserve that, that uh, diagonal line on that. So there's the top of my door frame, which I did with my darker value of yellow ochre and white. So now I'm going to move down. If your paint is getting a little thick, hard to move, dab your brush in the water in the water and tap it off. So I just put it in my container here and tap the brush off so it has a little bit of white. We're not thinning our paint, but we have a little bit of of water in our brush then. I'm going to my lighter value and I'm gonna do the same thing, staying true to the to the vertical, or yeah, it's a vertical line, but staying true to my straight lines that are on my door. And I'm gonna bring this lighter color down the side.
And again, I can use, if you're using an angled brush, you can, you can get it right into the corner there. Drag it up your line of your, the frame of your door, the very right side of the frame. I've turned my canvas over, so it's, and then when I get up here to the top, again, I wanna preserve that diagonal. So this, at this diagonal is where my, my light value of yellow ochre and my dark value are going to meet, like a picture frame. Okay, and the same thing when I get down here to the bottom, I'm gonna use the edge of my brush so I can keep that diagonal line at the bottom. So it will look like my step is reset, the door's recessed, like you have to walk into the into my painting to get in there. If you find that you've kind of gone out of the line, not a, we're gonna do blue on the door, but on this white side, if you find that you've kind of gone out of the line, you can come back with white and your palette knife to, yeah, to, you can come back here with your white, a little white and just, you know, use your palette knife to sharpen that. If you, if you went out, out of the line, pat it a little bit, huh? Yeah. Yeah, we can always fix whatever it is. We're gonna be putting some bushes down here, so not to worry about that part. The same thing if at the top of your frame, at the top of the door frame, your line got a little bit wobbly, you can come in with your palette knife and just sharpen that. Sharpen that line. If it's smooth, give it a little pat. Okay. So we're not gonna do the step at the bottom just yet. That's gonna come down in step 14. So we've just done the two sides of the door frame, sharpened our, sharpened our line of our door frame if we needed to. And then we'll leave that. We'll wipe off our palette knife, wipe off your brush. Wendy, is there a garbage in here? I forgot. Oh, maybe, maybe from your office? Yeah. Okay, if you're following along with the directions, number seven to number 12, seven to 12 steps are gonna be our door. And like other paintings that we've done, it's an impressionistic door. So, we are going to start with a light blue. So we're gonna take some of your, actually, I should just put it on with the brush. I'm just gonna put it on with the brush so you can see what we're, what we're, what we're going for here. On the back side, it shows pictures of the door. So, if you guys had looked at, looked at this, you will see that our door is like almost cut in half or like a quarter. So this is the way we lay our color onto our door. We're gonna mix some of the blue with some white. So I have blue and white. I'm gonna mix that up. So I have a light blue, almost like a sky blue color. And I'm gonna add just a touch of the emerald green, which is the, the green that we have. Okay, so I have a very light bluish green color. And with that, I'm gonna imagine my door cut in half here. 
but I'm not going to go all the way over to my door. So it's kind of like, what it, would it be? It'd be the bottom left quadrant, but it's uh, like a little bit more than a quarter of the door and you're going to paint this blue. Paint this with your, your kind of light blue, teal blue that you mixed. It can be more baby blue than this. Sorry, what did you use in that? Not the color. I used the blue and the white and the emerald green, sage green. Uh huh. And if you, so let's go back and look at the shadow of our door here. I'm using my angled brush so I can keep, so I can again preserve my straight line of the door. So there's how much I've colored with my light blue. The bottom left quarter of your door. Because, why did we do that? Well, let's go back to our pencil drawing. Shadow. The sun's coming from here. It is coming down. It is shining on the door in the bottom left corner. This is what's getting the light. And that, it's hitting that lighter color of the door. It's reflecting it back onto the side. So of our door itself, this is gonna be the lightest corner of our door. This is what's getting the most direct light, which is also why our white step down here is gonna be white, okay? But this part of our door, the upper half of our door, is going to have a shadow cast from the door frame. So with our same, with our same colors on here, you're going to take and you're going to add a little bit of black to this color, which my color is getting a little dry, so I put a little water in it. So I'm going to go back with a little bit of the black. I'm going to darken the value of that blue. Might have to put a little more green in it till I get it. And this is what I'm going to be painting up here. And I would say that's got to be a lot darker. I'm mixing a lot more blue with it to give it more, it's gotta be a lot bluer. So I've mixed my blue with a little bit of the green. Again, I wanna keep the, I wanna put it on so I can keep the, the door frame straight line on it. And this is gonna be the shadow part of my door. I'm just pulling that dark, that darker blue down. I need more blue. I'm going to turn my canvas so I can take yes, take more. Black is, the darker black is on the door. Yeah, the one that has more more paint in it is the black. If you've got a kid, the the one that has a little bit of paint is paints gray, and that's what's gonna we're gonna use to create the shadow of the flower on the stucco. So again, I. I've made my, my shadow up here is darker. The darkest part of my shadow is going to be up here in this corner. You can just lay some black in there and mix it in like that. 
And then we're going to come down here. I want to go carefully when I go along the edge there, my door, so that I can keep my keep the edge. That's just the one thing with this painting is you do have to be careful. Go a little slower here along your straight lines. So I really, I have told you before, I really love the paintings from, there's a few YouTube people that I love to follow. One of them is Wow Art. So I don't think I put it on the, the um, instructions this time. But it's wow art number nine, if you want to make note of that, if you want to see the professional guy do it. It's about a 19 minute video. He does the whole painting. So here I have, here's what my door looks like right now. I have a light bottom left corner and I've added shadow in here. If it's not shadowed enough, you can actually put your brush right in the black paint, put the black up here in that top right corner and just blend it. Blend it in. And we're going to add, I'm just going to look and see if we do the doorknob before we. Okay, now we're going to do with a palette knife, put some black on your paint palette. I have to get it out of my paint pot and put it on my palette. So scoop out just some straight black not the Payne's gray, the black, onto your, onto your palette. Need to wipe off my palette knife. Mm -hmm. And I wanna do this while the paint on your door is just a tad bit wet. So I'm gonna take my palette, I'm going to add, I'm going to add three vertical lines panels here on my door. So if you refer to your picture or the finished picture here, you can see there are, see these, these black lines? I'm gonna drag with my palette knife, I'm gonna drag down an edge of black and create the panels on my wood door, which again is gonna give it the texture versus the terracotta wall. It's gonna give it the texture of a door. Uh huh. So I'm gonna take my palette knife so I'm right-handed, so I, I'm turning the left side of my palette knife here into my paint. So here's the top of my knife, here's the bottom of my knife. So you can see I have a little line of black on it. The first line I'm gonna make is right down the middle of my door. So I'm gonna just come down with my palette knife, just like you were cutting, cutting a little cake. And of course, because it's a palette knife, not a brush, it doesn't hold the paint very good. So we're gonna dip it again. Yeah, if we had, if we had, if we had put our, if my door paint was thicker, I could actually be cutting through it, but I kinda, my door paint was a little bit light. So I've got, once I've got my door, each time I'm just dipping my palette knife edge into my black paint. Once I have the door split in half, I'm gonna come back and on each half, I'm gonna split that in half again. So I'll end up with three, three um, door panels. Well, three lines, but four door panels. I got two, so I come in here and I put another one. So there's my, there's my three door panels or three lines, four door panels. Okay. So I'm done with, I'm done with my um, palette knife for that part. So I need to make sure I wipe the black, make sure you wipe the black off of your palette knife. 
you need to, you can dip it in the water and then wipe it. It's funny how even a little speck of paint on the palette knife, next time you go to use it, it'll come out and smear. With your small brush and with straight yellow ochre, the mustard, you want to pick up a glob of paint. We're going to do the doorknob. So you're going to have a real glob of paint on your paintbrush and about three inches up or kind of in that first panel on your door, about where your light starts to change from the light part of the door to the shaded part of the top of the door, you're going to create a little orb here with a yellow ochre. It looks really cool if you make it make it 3D and make it just be a little glob of paint there. Adds a little texture with a little doorknob sticking out. Then wash your, wash your fine brush off. I'm using the very small liner brush. And I'm going to put a white highlight on the right side of it, but I don't want the white and the yellow to mix. So I'm going to have my paint be pretty thick on my brush. On my white brush, got, got it quite thick on there. And I'm just going to add a little glob of white on the left side of it. So we'll add a, just a little bit of a highlight. We, I don't want to mix it. I don't want to mess around with it too much and mix it in with the yellow ochre. I just want it to sit like a little highlight on top. See if I can get it close enough so you can see. So there's just a little, just a little bubble of yellow ochre with a little bit of white on the side. So you should have, using my yellow, my thin brush again, my little liner brush, you should have on your palette maybe a little bit of that dark blue still. If not, make a little bit more. We're going to add a shadow under the doorknob. It's such a tiny thing, but it adds so much to the look of the, of the door being in the shade. So I'm mixing up the black and the blue, black and blue. Give myself a little, a dark blue color. Uh-huh. With, with my very fine brush. So let's go back and look again at our shadow. Remember, the light's coming from up here. It's casting the shadow across here. Where this bottom left corner is the lightest part of our door. It's probably where you're going to see the shadow of the doorknob the darkest. <laughs> so because we're going to paint it at a little bit of an angle right under our doorknob. So don't get it mixed in with the yellow ochre. I know it's just a small thing. You can see it there on the picture, but look at how it makes that doorknob stick out. Yeah, that's why I have to keep going back to this pencil drawing, just to remember which way the light is coming. So here comes the impressionist part of the painting. And that is going to be the multicolors on the door. You can do this or you can choose to not do it. You can choose to leave your door just as it is. It looks awesome just that way. But if you would like to have it look more like a finished one here, we are going to come back with, as you can see, some yellow ochre and white, some of our, um, what is this, burnt sierra, but it's burnt sienna, it's the little rust, I would say it's rust, mustard, rust, mustard, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, the kind of rust color little bit of black and we're going to add some little splotches of paint onto our door which is just going to give it some character and some texture 
And, and so I would take my palette knife and on my palette, I'm gonna take my yellow ochre and I'm gonna scoop out just like with a knife, some yellow ochre on my palette. I'm going to put maybe a little bit of blue on my palette. I'm going to put some of my burnt sienna, my rust, rust color on my palette. Um, maybe I'll put a little black. And now since I got my paint out, I'm gonna wipe off my palette knife. So I'm starting with a clean palette knife. And it is hard to tell you how to do this. You just have to take a deep breath and just let it go. <laughs> You're just gonna take your palette knife, pick up a little bit of yellow ochre on the bottom, maybe a little bit of blue, maybe a little, burnt sienna. I am not, if I hold this up close enough, can you see? I am not mixing the colors on the bottom of my palette knife. I'm just kind of picking them up. And I'm going to start at the bottom on my, on my um, door. And I'm just going to lightly drag up some colors. I'm going to go back to my palette. Here I am. I'm using the bottom of my palette knife. I'm picking up some yellow ochre, some blue, some rust. And I'm just going to lightly tap some colors on there. Maybe I'll add a little bit, a little Bob Ross here. Maybe there's a little bit there on the upper part of the door. I would say this is just kind of where the wood is maybe worn. Maybe it gets kicked down here. Yeah, maybe been painted over. I've now added just a touch of black because I want a little bit of black up here. I really like that rust color in there too. It adds a little, a little to it. So there's my door with a little bit of color added onto it. I just love the shadow of that doorknob. Yes. Of the three paintings I've done of this door, that's the best shadow of a doorknob I've done. <laughs> because remember, it always looks better held out. So if you think it doesn't look good, hold it out at arm's reach and look at it and you will see how it's already looking like it's got the shadow on it. Okay, so we are going to use our white paint now with our quarter inch brush and we're going to paint the step because now we have we have gone down to we are on uh Step 13 and 14. So actually, before we do white with it, I've washed my angled brush off. I'm gonna come up here with a little of the burnt umber, which was the brown that I had. It's, it's so dark brown, it's really dark. Raw umber. So yeah, it's a little, little dark. And I am mixing, so I have a little bit of the, of the dark brown. And I'm going to mix a little yellow ochre with it. So there's my color that I got. And I'm going to come back here to the darkest part of my door frame, which was up here. And I'm going to just add a little bit more, a little dark to it. right at the top edge of the door, of the door frame.
Remember, when I get out to the right corner, I want to I want to keep that diagonal. So now I've just added a little bit more. Can you see just a little bit more darkness to that value at the top of the door frame? Wash your wash your brush because we're going to use white next. So we want to get the dark out of it. I'm just going to use white straight from my from my little tube, or I mean from my little well, tube or from my little container. So just straight white. Now the only part of my canvas that hasn't been touched with paint is my step. The uh, what do we call we call the threshold, right? The threshold at the bottom of the door. So I'm going to come in here again, painting, taking a deep breath, painting slowly with the edge of my brush to keep the straight line there. Don't have to worry so much with the terracotta or with the terracotta, with the stucco because it's so light colored to begin with. But against your door edge, try to keep your brush pretty still there. So yeah, keep that line. Preserve the diagonal at the at the right corner. And once I have my step covered with the white, we'll just add a teeny bit of shadow to it. So if you take your brush, I haven't washed it. It still has my white paint on it. Now I'm going to pick up Payne's Gray. So I'm going to take a little Payne's Gray on the corner of my brush. Already has white in my brush. And I'm going to mix up here a warm colored Blue. Gray. I'm not. I'm not saying wrong color. Oh, I do. Okay. I was. No, I wasn't. Why is that not? We want. We want like a warm gray color. So let's see. But it's like a navy blue. I have to just. I mixed it right there. I wonder if. I had somebody help me. Uh, uh, let's right see. Color. Maybe just mix a little black. Oh, I wonder how it came out real gray there. Yeah. I still have to black it. That's okay. Sure Use that. make a little make a little gray color. Should be like a, let's see. Wait a minute. I gotta figure this out. Just a sec. You actually want a little gray color. So you don't want it to be blue, you want it to be gray. So you use a little black with the white till you get a, a nice little light gray color. Okay, so forget using the paints gray, use the black with a little bit of white to get a nice little grayish color. And this grayish color is going to go in the corner, in the right corner of the door uh, step. So you're going to bring that gray along that right side of the door and down. To so have a little bit of a gray shadow in the right corner of the door. Thank you. 
So you want just a little bit of the color, a little too much, so I'm gonna put a little more white over it here. You see what I'm doing? Yeah, okay. So I have a little bit of, a little bit of the gray color is here in this corner of the door. And then the last thing with our door, we're gonna go back to our palette knife and black. And you're gonna take your palette knife, put it right in your black, like you did when you made the door panels, the wood panels. You're gonna put the edge of your palette knife right in the black. So it's just on the edge. And I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna cut in the bottom of the door. Just kind of like we did with the when we did the, the panels. Only we're going to come back here and and make our the bottom of our door. And cut the bottom. See how there's a nice sharp little black line at the bottom of the door. Looking pretty awesome. Okay, hey, while you're doing that, I'm gonna figure out how we can make, we're going on to the plants. We're almost done with it. The plant, the, the foliage goes pretty fast. So I know we're getting, we can, we're getting a little bit on time. So let me look here and see. I'm going to say we're just going to need to do it. So your, um, your stucco should be all dry to the touch. We're going to, when we're done with our door and done with our little shadow on our step area, excuse me, I'm going to slide on my chair here. Um, we are going to, before we paint our, uh, before we paint the plants on the right side of the door, the foliage, we're going to add the shadow of the plants. So again, remember the lights coming from up here, up in this area, shining down this way, our plants are going to be on this side. So the shadow is going to be cast all across the stucco here, where my hand is. So you're gonna mix a light gray, so a little white or white with just a tiny bit of black. Black is very powerful. That's why sometimes we use Payne's gray because it's not quite as powerful as the black. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's the same thing I had, huh? Oh, yeah. Okay. Huh. No. So I've made up some white with a little bit of black. Where am I at? Right here. To make this gray. I mixed it with my palette knife, so I'm going to go back and wipe off my palette knife because now I'm ready to put it on my canvas. So I'm going to take my palette knife and I'm going to pounce the bottom of my palette knife in the gray. Okay, so there's the top of my palette knife. Here's the bottom of my palette knife. So I don't want to glob I don't want to pounce this whole bottom of my palette knife on my canvas. So I'm going to take a little paper towel and dab my palette knife off just a little bit. So I have just the light. I have, if I, if I pounce the palette knife on my napkin, the bottom of my palette knife looks just like the texture of the stucco. 
which is what I want it to look like. Because now I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna just slide some shadow, which is gonna be the shadow of the plants that's being cast here on the here on my um, stucco. So here's how I did again. I mixed a, a light gray. Let me see where. Mixed a light gray, put it on the bottom of my palette knife. Took my palette knife and pounced it a couple times on a napkin. So it looks like stucco on the bottom of my palette knife. And now I'm going to come in here and just add a little bit of the shadow, which is going to be the shadow from my plants, actually, that's being cast onto the stucco of the wall. So you have to, in your mind's eye, imagine the way the, the plants are, there's like a little glob of plants up here in the top left corner. Then we have some vines for their little stems. Then we have another bunch of plants here at the bottom where the, they're coming out. So just imagine that this is going to have be plants and plants, and that's what's going to be casting the shadow. So when you feel like you've got enough of your gray shadow there, because you have the texture of your stuccoed wall and because you pounced off your gray, it's just going to be little spots. So there is my there's my leaf shadow on my stucco wall. My door is done. My awesome door knob and shadow look are there. <laughs> and I splattered a little gray on my white step. So while you're doing that, I'm going to come back with my white and cover that up. And also something else I don't like. I do not, I've lost my step right here from where it's white to where the stucco is. So I'm gonna put a little more of the, the yellow ochre down here. Just so I can get a little bit darker where, it, the, where the step is here a little bit more definition from, uh, I'm just pouncing my palette knife on there. A little bit more definition where I want the step to come out here. That looks better. Okay. So we're gonna, Take a little pause here till everybody can get caught up. The last thing we're gonna do is our plants. So if you've used, if you've made a real mess on your palette plate, you might wanna grab another plate. Although the plants don't take much. They're, we're just gonna mix up some greens. Okay, can you guys give me a thumbs up or or in the chat say you're ready to where am I at? Move on with uh with uh plants. Or better yet, if you're not, say that you're not. Yeah, if you're if you're not, give us some kind of sign or unmute yourself and say, hold on. <laughs> They have two kinds of green, right? Yes, they have the sour green. We're good. Somebody's saying something. What'd you say? We're good. You're good? Yep. Not good. Oh, 
Okay. So you have in the kit, you have two greens. What color are they? Yellow and emerald. Emerald green, which is like your like a pure green, a brighter green. Then you have a phthalo green, which is a which is a darker bluer green. Okay. So I'm going to use my little flat brush, and I'm going to put some. I'm going to do I'm going to do this with dots, okay? <laughs> so I'm put some green down here at the bottom. I'm going to put some green kind of uh, above the doorknob on the side of the house. I'm going to put some green up here in the right corner. I'm going to go back with my brush and I'm going to pull up some of the, the darker green. I'm going to just put dots of it, little globs of it by where I have the other color. When you're painting the foliage, you're going to be working from dark to light. Oh, your thing over here says low battery. That one. You're gonna, we're gonna put in the dark first and then we'll put in lighter when we get to adding the outer leaves, right? Because if you look at a bush, again, we're focusing on shadow. The deep darkest shadow is gonna be deep inside and that's where we're gonna start with. So I can even take here and add a little of my black in here. I'm just taking little spots of it to add it in. Okay, now just using my brush and the little globs of paint I put on here, I'm gonna just start pouncing them around, blending them as I go, uh, making sure when I get here to the door, I can have a little bit of it overlap the door. So we I'm can't just... see what you're doing. Huh? If we can't see what you're doing, it's not in the camera. Oh, sorry. sorry. There we go. And I'm gonna bring that, the, the darkness down here to where my tape is, to the bottom of my painting. So it should, it should be a mix of, of shades. You should see some Darker green, if you want to add a little more darker, you can put a little more black in with it and just kind of blend it as you go, tapping it in. And once you have your bush down here, bottom of your door done, then you're going to remember I told you it's kind of like a, isn't it bougainvillea that it's kind of a viney? So we're going to have, we're going to have some here, kind of in the middle. Again, looks best when you look at it from a distance. So in between these two little globs, these two little bush areas is where I'm going to have my brown little vines going. So we got that going. And I'm just going to work my colors up here. Patting, just patting them with my little flat brush. Takes quite a bit of paint, so you can just add a little more onto your brush. Make it overlap your door some. We're gonna have some kind of uh, umbrelling, like an umbrella kind of coming out over the door. So can you see how I'm just kind of working my working my foliage up over the edge of my door, alongside the door there. And while I have the green on my brush, I'm just going to put a little bit over here on the left side. Don't want it to be left out over here. I have a little, little plant coming down here.
So I'm going to say that I'm kind of done there with my, well, maybe I'll put a little bit more here. Okay, that looks done to me. So remember the rust color that we had? I'm going to take, if you have a kit, you just have a little spot in a jar, in a container, in a little cup. I'm going to use my liner brush and I'm going to get it quite wet because I almost want this, I want this to really flow. Almost an ink, ink consistency. And with this, I'm going to create some little vines little trunk vines that are kind of going to connect my going to connect my my foliage here and so if my little if my little vines are coming up here and you might see some up here in my plant it's kind of like when you're doing, it's kind of like when you're doing a tree, you know, a little, you might see a little bit of the brown up in the green. They're just kind of bringing those up there like that. And you can take also your, your dark brown that you have. And you can mix a little of the dark brown just to give your vines a little shadow on one side. You make them darker. Just a thin little line. And if we're gonna add a shadow, we can also add the highlight by putting a little white along our along our vine for the highlighted side. So I'm just using a little white. Adding a little highlight onto my vine area. So I'll try to hold this up so you can see. So there's the vine. So I have a little, the little twisted kind of grapeviney like almost little vine connecting the plants. And then up here in the plant, you can see a little bit of the stem through there. You should start to be able to see how that gray that you put on your stucco it is forming the shadow from your foliage. You have not the yellow ochre, but you have a light yellow that was in your kit, a light yellow, cadmium yellow. So if you mix the cadmium yellow, I'm just using my palette knife to put some on my palette with a little bit of the green. I'm gonna get a little lime green. So I have here my brighter yellow mixed with my emerald green. It will give me like a little lemon color, lime color. Remember how we were working from dark to light with our, with our flower or with our leaves? So now, this dark has had a little bit of chance to dry a little bit. So now we're gonna come in with this light green to add the, the leaves that are catching the sunlight here. I am using my square or my little flat brush, but I'm turning it on its edge so that when I touch the paint here and smush it, so when I touch it here, let me see where I'm at, up here. Does that make sense? 
look, here's the brush. So it's it's the little flat one, but I'm turning it on its edge. So I'm using the edge of it like this to push down and just, I'm going back and forth. Here's my palette. So I'm going back and forth, maybe a little more yellow here. The yellowest leaves are gonna be the ones that are on the very outside edge. They're the ones catching the, catching most of the light. Maybe hanging over the door a bit. I'm gonna be up in my I move that. Okay, so here's the palette. Picking up the yellow from my palette, adding it on here to my bush at the bottom. You can really see how the focus for tonight was on shadow because everything we're doing is is creating a little perspective, a little depth. Put a little of it over here on the other side. So if I hold this up, you should be able to see how I have how I have some light green leaves in there. Do you see the value change? Started with the dark. And I'm adding the light because again, that's what's catching catching the sunlight is the leaves on the out, outer edge. And I did a little bit over here on this side. How's everybody doing? Good? Wendy, how many people are on? 31 people painting with us tonight. That's amazing. Yeah. So you'll be glad to know you're done with the palette knife. And when you get your leaves done, you are also done with your brush. Because our flowers are the last thing we're gonna add. We're doing just right, it's 8.30. And we're gonna put them on with a Q-tip. So my palette is a real mess. So I have a little cup with this, what color is the pink, fuchsia? <laughs> Magenta. I have a little tiny bit of magenta. If you if you don't have a kid, if you're paint with us, we what you're looking for is two values of pink, a light pink and a deeper rose pink. So whatever colors you have there to use. You're gonna take a Q-tip and I'm just pulling up some white and I'm just gonna mix it right here in my cup. So I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna have the the magenta color, and then I'm gonna have a color that's mixed with white. So can you see, I have a darker color, well, I have the pure magenta, and then I have the one that I mixed with white. And now I'm just gonna come back to my painting using my little cup here and a Q-tip, and I'm gonna add my flowers. And of course, Q-tips don't hold much paint, so you have to just keep going back and forth. And if you want them to look like they are cascading, then you could put them um, like a little cluster and bring them down like a little, uh, you know, like a grape. So start with a couple of maybe three big ones, just like uh, bowling pins, and then they come down and then they just have little one hanging off. So let's see if I do one on the door so you can see it better. So here I have, a little cluster. So I have three, I'm making a little triangle and I'm just having it hang down. So if I hold that up, can you see the little pink? How they just like look like little cascading flowers hanging from the vine? This is probably our own plant. There probably really is not a plant like this. Oh, oh wisteria is just that. Yeah, that's right. Your version of wisteria. Mm-hmm. 
well, if there isn't, there should. And I can put, I'm, I'm also going back to my pure magenta, just kind of mixing it in. Remember, which it says to have a different value. The darker pink ones would be, you know, the ones that are a little deeper in the, in the leaves. You have a lot of Q-tips there. So when one gets yucky, you just toss it in the garbage and grab another one. And you just add however many flowers. Don't mess up your doorknob. That doorknob is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but your flowers can come down to the doorknob. <laughs> How's your doorknob, Wendy? It's good. I accidentally smooshed it a little bit uh, when I was adding the plants. Uh -huh. So it did look amazing. And then I so up at the top where I have the little, I'm sure it will look amazing. Up at the top where I have my little cascading wisteria type little flowers. Down here on my little plant here, I'm gonna have little columns of flowers. Instead of cascading down, I'm gonna have them go up like a little, I don't know, like a little Indian paper she is. What, what do you have, what flowers are like that? Yeah, hollyhocks maybe, and a small version, like a tiny house version of hollyhocks. Lupin, yeah. And just to have a little variety, of course you can do whatever color flowers you want around there. But I, so, so the pink and the blue mixed together are gonna give you lavender. So I'm gonna get another Q-tip and I guess I'll have to put it on my messy palette. And I'm gonna do a little blue and a little pink together. Ta -da! Amazing lavender. There, can you see my amazing lavender? Let me hear a cheer from all of you. Yay, <laughs> lavender. So I have a little amazing lavender color here that I'm gonna use on my Q-tip. And on my bush that's down here on the bottom left of my door, it's going to have some blue flowers on it. So my grandma's name was Violet. She was she was a oh she was a magical gardener, and she was also a fantastic cook. And my daughter Cammy is a fan, well, all my girls are good, good cooks, but Cammy is starting her own business out in California there. And she is calling it the Sweet Violet Baking Company. And she, she makes mixes. And so she, she loves this violet color. She named it Sweet Violet after my grandma because my grandma's the one that taught her how to make bread. So, so of course in our painting, we need to have a little violet, right? Later ones. And if you like, I'll go back to my little pink. Um, your little ones that are climbing up the side of the door, maybe a few little petals came loose. So you might want to put like a little petal or two down here on the on the doorstep where maybe a few little pink petals might have fallen. Well, you can do whatever you like. That's <laughs> so let's see here. So of course, our, our last step in painting, I'm getting, I'm getting certified as a Zentangle teacher in, in this month in May, in May. So just like in Zentangling, the last part of our, the last part of our painting is to sign it, own it, and appreciate. Appreciate that we just had this wonderful time together. I just can't, it's very hard for me to tell you how 
thankful I am for the opportunity I've had, Wendy and the library have given me this last year or so to, to um, do these paint classes. I love art and I'm really hoping that I'll be able to continue to do this a little bit for you. But it is nice to, when you're finished, just take a moment to pause and be grateful that you had this time. We had this time to be together through all these miles or not so many miles, but just to spend this time creating something that's so beautiful. And like other paintings that we've done, it will always look so much better in the morning. <laughs> right? You set it up away from you and look at it from a distance. If you chose to tape your painting, now is the aha moment to pull the paint, pull the tape off. So it looks like, voila, it's already framed. Which doesn't, doesn't look so much on this one because our, our, our background is so white, but still will be an aha moment. How you doing, Wendy? <laughs> so unmute yourself and talk to us. Tell us how you did, what you think, or or if you have questions. So wonderful to hear your voices. I'm gonna try to peel the tape off here. Which Thank you for helping us. What'd you say? We appreciate you helping us. Thank you. Oh, you are welcome. Someday we'll be together and, and hug each other and share. The doorknobs yes, <laughs> doorknobs with amazing shadows. <laughs> so when I get my tape off here, which is kind of frustrating, okay. So there's my finished one. And I want to see...